ready to explore the extraordinary world of tech. Welcome to the XTech Podcast, where we connect you with the sharpest minds and leading voices in the global tech community. Join us as we cut through the complexity to give you a clear picture of the ideas, innovations, and insight that are shaping our future. Hello, and welcome to the X Tech Podcast by Fox Agency. I'm your host, Debbie Forster, MBE. I'm the CEO at the Tech Talent Charter and an advocate and campaigner for diversity, inclusion, and innovation in the tech industry. I'm delighted to be working with Fox Agency as the host of the X Tech Podcast and as curator for the X Tech community. Today, I'm really delighted to be joined by Winnie Palmer. She's the EMEA Head of Marketing at Seismic. Welcome, Winnie. Hello. Thank you for having me. So, Winnie, to start off with, our listeners love to hear how people get into tech. For some, it was, you know, born with a laptop in hand. Others, it's a bit more wiggly getting into tech. How about you? How did I get into tech? It was actually not that straightforward. I started with a master's degree in epidemiology, which has nothing directly relating to technology as we know today. But I think, you know, at the time, um, thinking about what I want to do, technology just really resonated with me. Um, I'm not what people would call a digital native, even though I have a digital marketing childhood and I've been in the technology sector for more than more than 20 years. I'm actually a Gen X. Uh, and one thing about the Gen X is that we, we are the stewards who, who manage the transition from the analog world to the digital world. Arguably, we were the original in the beginning of the waves of digital transformations in the decades following. And I just really love technology. I've been always being inquisitive, eager to learn how new technologies can help solve real problems for people. And I guess it is that curiosity and, and, and that thirst for, for innovation that has got me into tech and still keeping me here. Fantastic. And I love that. I'm, I'm Gen X myself. And I love the idea. I'm always skeptical about digital native, but there are, you know, people like my daughter were born not knowing anything different. But the idea of us as stewards, as having been there through that transition, is a really interesting way of approaching it. And I I want to embrace that. I like that idea of a, of a stewardship mentality. And I think hearing about your curiosity with people and, and problem solving that's something I think, you know, when we look across tech, a lot of my guests, there's an even split really between those that were fascinated by the machines and the gadgets themselves and wanted to take them apart. But then there are those of us who were fascinated by the problems that the tech solved. And what we're seeing then as employers and as companies, if they're looking for great talent in tech, it's not just about looking at what their degree is. It's looking for what you were describing, that curiosity, that problem solving that can actually end up making great people in tech. Yeah. And did you notice we we have now actually in the workforce four generations together? Good Lord. Yeah. We have the boomers, (laughs) Gen X, millennials and Gen Z, right? So the point is not so much how old we are, (laughs) but, but the behavior and attitude that we are seeing many of us are adopting is the digital first attitude. Absolutely. Fantastic. How did you find yourself into seismic? How did I find find my way to Seismic? Um, It it is quite an interesting story. I actually, at the time, I was running my own business as a consultant. And Seismic was a client of mine. Um, I was doing something around um, the innovation sector, helping firms to scale and uh, to grow. Uh, But then COVID hit and suddenly... Businesses are not looking for growth. Uh, they are looking for business sustainability. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, and just luckily enough, I mean, um, at the time, I, I, I'm really grateful. Uh, the seismic uh, CMO at the time, um, Michael Longgren, he um, just invited me to join Seismic as a full-timer to help scale the business internationally into Europe. And I was the first uh, marketing hire really in 
Europe, and I've been there four years now. Uh, it's been a long journey. But oh, what a four years! I mean, it's interesting it, it, that moving across the table from from consultant to rolling up your sleeve and doing it. But to do it in 2020 is a crazy time. There was an acceleration of all manner of things. So when you joined Seismic amidst the lockdown, what were the challenges? What were the opportunities for your role then? Yeah, so I joined Seismic during the time of COVID. And it is a weird time. If there's one silver lining about COVID is that it changed the way we work, right? And all the businesses had to switch to virtual selling pretty much overnight. And and to be able to sell virtually effectively, you need to have some sort of tools, you know, content data, tools, intelligence, et cetera, delivered to sellers in an automated and personalized fashion. So your sellers can then in turn create personalized buyer experience at scale to compete in a very suddenly um, super noisy digital selling world, right? So I, I think that 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 was a that was an opportunity. Um, at that time, sales technology firms like my company had a boom time actually, as our customers suddenly needed to rapidly beef up their technology infrastructure to enable their digital first go to market motions. But you know what? At two years ago when I joined, I didn't meet anyone in person. You know, at work, uh, we were all in lockdowns, right? We're wearing pajama pants, maybe doing conferencing <laughs> calls. <laughs> um, and I remember you know, camping in my back garden with my children. And uh, honestly, trying to work full time while doing homeschooling is not recommended. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that all our customers were in the same shoes. So you asked about challenges. So that's the thing. We were all stuck at home. And overnight, not only the sellers had to learn to sell differently, buyers had to learn to buy virtually too. Agreed. Isn't it? And I think that transformation of, and that's not gone away, but but COVID did give a different generation. This is a whole new world, both for selling and for buying. And I don't know what you found, but I, I hear often people talking about even if I'm a B2B buyer, I want a B2C experience. So how does tech help that? Uh, yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, we, we probably all do a little bit of that now, right? We're so used to receiving personalized experience that we now take it almost for granted that all the interactions delivered by a company should be based on my interest, yeah. my desire, my need, right? And, and as a minimum, you know, we will expect that, please don't send me a generic proposal, right? That doesn't tightly align with my business context and my business requirements. So, you know, let's just imagine if you are if you are on the other side of the table, not as a customer, but as a salesperson, right? Imagine if you were a seller, uh, you own dozens of accounts or more, and in each account, there are, multiple stakeholders to manage and and you need to and you want to tailor your content and your conversation to each meeting, each person, so you can deliver highly compelling personalized interaction every single time, right? To advance your deals and improve your win rates ultimately. And very quickly, you just imagine that your day becomes super complex and unwieldy. Absolutely. Because that's 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 a whole lifetime of, and you have much greater scale on all the things you used to learn, I guess, over golf games or coffees, over drinks. But you're expected to do that now at scale and at speed. That's right. That's right. And then, and that's why you need to have technologies, right, to help you get organized, so you can be more effective and. And efficient. And you know what? The sales enablement is something I can speak to. And maybe I just use that as an example. Yeah. Yeah. So sales enablement actually started with this precise use case. So um, you want, you know, the the company takes the responsibility in the operation to deliver personalized content to the sellers based on the deal factors and the buying persona at that very given point in time and customized to the specific need with accurate data, case studies, pricing, or even um, what I love the most is a snackable just-in-time training for the specific SKUs that the seller is selling. Fantastic. 
Yeah, and, and things have evolved even more since. I mean, now with AI, I would have to throw in AI. No, of course. No conversation <laughs> on the bingo great. card. If you haven't said that, I'm not talking in chat. Right. So that's throwing AI. And 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 we've done really well to not talk about AI until now. <laughs> um you can you can have a personalized AI assistant with whom you can now practice your messaging and receiving feedback directly from your personal AI. Fantastic. You know? I give you an example. Like when we have product launches, I learn all the details and then I need to learn uh, also how to deliver it. And the way to uh, practice my delivery is I do it with my personalized AIs and I upload my, um, not, not even uploading, I'm just practicing with my AI within environment. And the AI would tell me if I have included all the keywords. Um, did I say too many filler words? How about the speed of my delivery? And all these can really further help me improve the quality and effectiveness of my customer meetings when I go to see them. Fantastic. So your own personal coach, your sales coach. And does that help yeah. me in interactions? If I'm talking to someone online, like more and more sales calls are happening now, do I get that same helpful little voice in my ear cueing me along? Yeah. Yeah. You, you would be surprised to, to know this is actually a real use case. Um, it, it's, it's what our customers are using already. Because during conferencing calls like this, you don't really know how many screens you're, you're, the person you're speaking to actually have. So, so all these additional assistants actually can be quite discreet. So imagine if you are in a conferencing call situation, uh, if you are the seller, uh, before you even get into the meeting, uh, uh, the your your artificial intelligence assistant can analyze all the content um, your learning your own personal learning and, and engagement data from all the previous interactions and instantly identify gaps to recommend to you tailor training to help you accelerate your knowledge before you even get into the meeting so you are prepared uh, and even a, a, a checklist based on the learnings you have completed or not, right? So so your skills and context of co upcoming conversation is uh, analyzed and um, prepared for. Now, of course, while you are in the meeting, all these little um, recommendations, I say, as the conversation goes by, your customer asks a question, and that question contextually will be analyzed and understood and you'll get a prompt of the answer. No more the situation where you will have to say, let me check and come back to you because all the answer is on the screen instantaneously delivered to you in that moment in time. And that's a powerful way. I think as we're all getting our head round how AI, machine learning, generative AI can help us, the scaremongering talks about how it replaces humans, but what's the really powerful use cases are that's when we augment humans, make them better. So we're not replacing the skills that a salesperson has. We're giving them, we're feeding that so that they get even better at that and can do that at speed in real time. That makes it really, really powerful. Amazing. I mean, is is there anything else that, that you think is, is happening in terms of that virtual experience? Because I think when people think about AI, if we lose the human, we lose the empathy, that, that real life relationship. What would you say to that? Yeah, I think it's a pull and push. There is this business requirements almost that firms are looking at how to adopt AI to drive more efficiency and productivity into their operations. If you look at the data, for example, 80% um, of sales leaders expect that on average, maybe around 23% of revenue growth from AI utilization over the coming five, five years. So that's a lot. And on top of that, nearly 70% believe companies that fail to incorporate AI into their go-to-market processes effectively will fall behind their competitions by 2026. So there is a huge momentum being created because the, the benefit uh, AI offers 
to uh, to us really. Um, but on the other hand, you know the the responsibility and the, the whole thing around ethics certainly is critical and. As a marketer, I look at how to adopt AI to help me remove barriers to my performance so I can be faster, quicker, more effective. But I also know that um, I have the responsibility to select, prioritize, and work with vendors who are responsible in terms of data, in terms of security, in terms of representation. And we're all learning at the moment, right? Every single one of us to find the a more responsible path forward when we adopt this technology. And, and there are some other, you know, situations, not just in sales enablement. That recently I come across a business, it's a German firm. Um, they, they are in the engineering simulation space. Now, what they offer is a pro- pro- production-ready, cloud-first, easy access to engineers. In, in other words, they scale access to simulation softwares that at low cost, uh, which in turn helps accelerate innovation and engineering solutions to help build a better future for the humankind. So, you know, that sort of stuff really excites me, you know, how technology solves problems for humans. And, you know, if we, we, we chart a responsible path going forward and really look at uh, how to adopt these technologies in a responsible but also beneficial way, you know, it, it is actually a, a brighter future uh, and I'm quite hopeful about and that. I, Sorry, d- no, don't, that. don't apologize at all. And I love because that golden thread, again, of your interest, both the curiosity, what tech can do, your interest in humans, but also what I heard that you were talking about is, again, that stewardship mindset. So, If we stop thinking about it either at the extremes of as a threat or this is the gold rush, go for it. I like what you were saying is how can we use AI, machine learning, Jenny AI, to remove barriers, to enhance, to to grow, to enable us as humans to get better at that. But there is that stewardship piece. How are we ensuring that we have data security, that we have an ethical use of data, et cetera. But in that space with the curiosity, but the steward mindset, that's where great use cases, that's where great innovation is going to come. And you've got some startling stats about companies. So if you're on this, this podcast and you're sort of sitting back or your boss is sitting back thinking, well, let's just wait until the dust settles. If you wait till the dust settles, you'll see your competitors at the horizon and you're right, left, you've been left behind. Yes. I, I mean, looking at in terms of the horizon, if we're seeing the horizon, is there anything that's particularly grabbing your attention at the moment? Oh, yeah, it's got to be AI. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I do, well, you know, I, I might have been surprised, but I think given what you're talking about, so so what's coming up the horizon via AI that, that you think is really exciting or interesting? Yeah, and you know, generative AI burst into the masses consciousness last spring, right? And it has exploded in terms of the range of applications incorporating Gen AI's capabilities. And I really think that we have reached a a defining moment with AI that is going to fundamentally change everything, you know, how we go to market. And um, and and you know, we talk about meetings just just earlier. Um, and salespeople who have a strong first meetings with with the prospect, we found from the research are, are two point five times more more likely to close a deal. Wow. Right. So so you know so how do salespeople prepare, implement, and follow up on customer meetings with the help of AI for all the meetings that they have to deal with day in day out? You know that is going to really make their life easier and their whole experience more compelling as well for their customers. Fantastic. That's really great. Look, Winnie, I I have really loved talking to you. And one of the other things that our listeners love to hear is what might you be reading, doing, seeing, listening to that that is most valuable for a moment? What what's what's bubbling around for you? Most valuable? Uh I might be bucking the trend a little bit here. You know, I, I'm doing Shakespeare right now. <laughs> That's amazing. How? What? Tell me more. <laughs> Uh, it is it's a little fun fact. Um, I belong to a village drama school in Blackheath. And every Monday I have this little artistic date with myself and my fellow 
actors to learn about Shakespeare and to play. Um, yeah, in my in my you know very humble opinion, who who best to teach us about humanity than the grandmaster Shakespeare himself? I couldn't agree more. <laughs> I love that idea of an artistic date with ourselves, and you know, there's so much research that shows when we're developing those other sides of our personality, of our brain, of our creativity, and the more that we can create spaces and time to play. That's where the great ideas come from. So now I've got a mental picture of you doing some some amdram on on Shakespeare. What are you working on at the moment? Uh, we just performed a Midsummer Night's oh, Dream lovely. a couple of weeks ago. It was absolutely ridiculous and great fun. That's the great fun of that. It was a, and everybody wants to be bottom or is afraid they're bottom. I'm not sure which one it is, etc. But Fantastic. Winnie, I really appreciate you taking time from your very busy life and your artistic dates to talk with us here at Xtech. Thank you so much for having me. That was great fun. Thank you for listening. If you're a tech innovator and would like to appear as a guest on the show, email us now at xtech at fox.agency. And finally, thank you to the team of experts at Fox Agency who make this podcast happen. I'm Debbie Forster, and you've been listening to the X Tech Podcast. Keep exploring the world of tech. Subscribe to our podcast and never miss an episode. To discover more opportunities for global B2B tech brands, visit fox.agency today.